All right. So we just got back from the Arboretum. The Dallas Arboretum, where Arlo met Santa, Claus. Santa for the first time. Oh, I'm cutting off your head. Hey, everyone. This is Scott. Say hi. Hey. Hi. He is going, <laughs> you're so awkward. <laughs> He's gonna cook dinner tonight. Um, what are you making? Get over here, so, though. The lighting is better from this angle. We are going to make butternut squash soup mm -hmm. with Brussels sprouts and some spiced pumpkin seeds. Ooh. And then to top that all off, we're gonna do a pan fried chicken thigh. Ooh. All right, so Scott's a pretty good cook. Why? Eh. Why, Where, what is your background? What is your history with cooking? So I used to work as a sushi chef for mm -hmm. several years and most recently for a Wolfgang Puck restaurant. So I learned a lot of cooking skills there. So it's, I'm more of a hobbyist than a chef, but I like to have fun. It's so pretty good. So, so what have you done? So we went to the Dallas Arboretum um, and in the meantime we prepped a little bit and by we, I mean him. So what I did is I just set the oven to 325. You could do 350 and baked butternut squash and onion and you can see some uh, garlic in there. It's nice and roasted. So you basically just like cut the top off of the garlic and just set, set it in there? Yeah, I'm just gonna squeeze all that out into the blender. Cool. So what we're gonna do is take all of this and take all the actual food out of there and uh, get rid of the skins and put it in the blender with some chicken okay. stock. Before we do that though, you literally just like cut this in half and took out all the seeds. Yeah. And now if you were like not doing it obviously like for like three hours, right? Because we roasted that thing for a while. Yeah, hours, um, you'd normally do it at like, what you say, like, like 350. 350, 375, yeah, something like that? It's 350, you just remember garlic will burn at 350 degrees. Okay, cool. So low and slow. So put it in when you like, I don't know, first get home or something. Cool, all right. So that's the start of that. You could check out over here some pumpkin There's seeds. Some pumpkin seeds and dress those up yeah. and bake them with some spices. Pipitas. Cool. Got my swinny. Yeah. All right. Cool. All right. Well, show us what's next. Hopefully not to act weird. So. <laughs> you cut the ends off of those, weird. but I wondered yeah, why you cut safe. the ends off because it literally says ready to use washed. Yeah, but I just don't like that brown stuff on there, so I just oh. I just like shave that off and then I cut it in half. I don't. You don't have to. Um, I'm a perfectionist. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't do that part. Look at his little apron over there. It told me it looks like the guy from Texas Chainsaw Massacre. It's probably true. I just got this apron. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty excited about it. So. Yeah. All right, so you're cutting up some Brussels. Yep, cutting the Brussels in half. Now, most of this, this meal really wasn't planned. I had bought Brussels sprouts um, last week when I went grocery shopping, and I also bought butternut squash, and we always have onions, and the only difference is, I was like, hey, you should make butternut squash soup because he has made it before and it's really good. Um, and then he was like, hmm, okay, well, can you get chicken thighs with the skin on it? We'll do crispy chicken thighs. And then he thought of Brussels sprouts. But you really could do like broccoli. You could do any, I mean, we just pick whatever you have in the fridge. You don't like plan out a lot of people plan out their meals, right? They go to the grocery store like I do. Normally, before I met you, I like planned out what I was gonna have and I'm like, I'm getting shrimp this week, I'm getting tortillas because I'm gonna have shrimp tacos, I'm gonna have this for lunch. I think about all that stuff. You don't do that, right? No, I just uh, look at what's in the fridge and decide what I'm gonna make. So that's what we're gonna do tonight. Yeah, I'm just gonna put a little bit of olive oil Cool. I think and those are just like regular. I just got these from Trader Joe's and they're just like normal pumpkin seeds, just like unshelled, whatever. Yeah. Anyways. And uh, I'm gonna put some blackening seasoning. So I want these to be spicy, mm -hmm. but I want them to be sweet too. So I'm gonna put some blackening seasoning. And some honey some... or sugar. Ooh, honey sounds good. I was honey. Kind of sugar want too. I just want it to be spicy, salty, and a little bit sweet. Yeah. Um, so we're, what we're gonna do is mix all this around and then we're gonna throw it on a baking sheet. And it's down below. Cool. So, Scott has an Instagram, which I'll leave down below. 
and he has a food reel on his, or what do you call it, a food story <laughs> saved know. on his Instagram so you can check out some of his cool recipes. Oh, Let me get a glimpse. All right, all right, all right. Cool. All right. So that's what's happening so far. I will check in with you guys. Well, you're gonna put those in the oven at what? We're gonna put them in there at uh, 375. Cool, until they're like yeah. fragrant, right? I think that's when you so know nice and fragrant, when seeds or, or something or nuts are, are good. Another fun segment from Scott. What are you teaching us now? All right, this is the best way to pop garlic out of the shell. Pop, garlic pop, is a pop pain it up. in the butt to peel. So what you want to do? Have you ever seen where they do like where they shake it in a jar? Does that actually work? Have yeah, you ever I've done never, that? I've never had that work. Me so. either. Okay, so what are you gonna you do? do? Is you take the garlic and the bottom side. Wait, the, not in focus. Not in focus. Not in focus. Okay, not in the focus. The bottom side. Work. Cut it off. Hold on. Like that. And then just, and then it pops. Right it's up. chicken time. All right, so we got chicken here and it's chicken, chicken thigh. Here. And as you can see, it's got the bone in it. We don't want the bone, so we have to take these chicken thighs and actually debone. Oh, them. I thought there was four of them. There's really only like three and a half. Yeah, this guy's a little, Oops. Just a little guy. Well, it's plenty for our little meal that we're gonna have. So True. All right, so what you gotta do is you gotta take the bone. You gotta, you gotta find de debone the, the chicken. Yeah, you're gonna debone it. So the reason why, yeah, like most people don't want to debone a chicken. Could you do this with chicken breasts? You could. But it's not gonna be as juicy, right? Yeah, if you can find some skin on chicken breasts, it would be good. The reason why we did this is it's got the skin. We want the crisp And the skin. skin, you put some salt on it and you fry it and it's so crispy and delicious. delicious. So, you know, we'll trim a little bit of the skin off, actually. Do you think the average person has a deboning knife? Can they no, use any kind of knife? You can use any knife. Like I, I could use this knife or that other knife. So this is a special deboning pretty. knife that has my name in Japanese on it. For all of my Japanese viewers, we got this at the Tsukiji. What's the knife brand name? Uh, Masamoto Sohenten. Ho, 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 ho. But that says kitty. It looks dirty, but it's really not. That's yeah, just it's the, um, the, the like rust, a patina. Uh, yeah, patinas, exactly. So this is a chicken deboning knife, and you can tell by the way it looks. <laughs> if any of y'all have seen that. What's that nature? It's a nature video? Nature. Nature, nature walk. You can tell that it's a... Pine cone. <laughs> the way it looks. <laughs> On account of the way it looks. All right. All right so, so we're going to debone some chickens. Yeah, what you got to do, and I'll get this piece out of the way. What you got to do is you got to find the bone, right? It goes this way from here to there. So you just cut along the bone. Also, Pretty easy. sorry if anybody's squeamish to meat and stuff. And you just trim along the side. I'll put a disclaimer. Then you trim along the other side. And it's pretty simple. You just kind of cut around the bone. You don't want to cut through the bone. But then you move it around. You cut under the bone a little bit. So your knife should be a little bit sharp for this. Um, so it can kind of glide through the meat. Then you take the bone. And you just right up. There, boom. My tongue is purple because I drank mulled wine at the Arboretum. And Arlo San saw Santa behind a plexiglass. He wasn't Thanks, scared because he didn't really care. But maybe next year he'll probably cry. <laughs> but anyways, and then we also got him a little book, which do we live the book in the car? Um, probably. It's a book that says, probably. good night Dallas. And it like says good night to all the landmarks of Dallas. We're trying to get him more books because Books are cool. All right. He started reading last week. Yeah, he started reading at seven months. He could totally read. I can't even read and I'm 30. It's fine. Probably shouldn't advertise that. Chickens <laughs> debone, skin up. You want to salt them pretty heavily. A lot of this salt is going to come out while you're cooking it. So don't don't be afraid of over salting it. I mean, you don't want to don't want to put crust, like, but don't want to um, salt I mean, it to Kelly standards. No. I'm an I'm a chronic but over But what this will do when you salt it is it actually pulls the water out of the skin while you're frying it. Um, so it makes it to where it crisps up better. Black pepper. Salt and pepper. That's it. Salt and pepper. So I put like three times as much salt on the skin side as I did on the non-skin side. 
So we've let this cool. We let it cool for a little bit. Done this is the butternut squash. Away. And then you just scoop it out with the skin. Hopefully this scoops out easy. Why don't just peel the skin off? I guess we can just peel the skin off. Good job. Good idea. Cut. I know. I'm full of them. <laughs> it's not about perfection. It's about real life. Give me one of them squash. All right, so oh, speaking of puree, we should save some of this for Arlo. Hey, quit putting your skins in my good squash, man. Save some of this for Arlo. It's for us. No, we're gonna save a little bit for Arlo. No, no, no. He needs some. I guess. Yeah. I guess the kid can eat. The kid can eat. So we use the bouillon, which is funny. Funny story, Scott hated this when I first showed it to him. And now he's a, a firm believer. So we use this kind. I used to use this when I was, but anyways, uh, um, yeah, so you mix it in with some water yeah. um, and make like a broth. If you, if you have chicken broth in the fridge, if you have freaking any kind of broth, it works, right? Yeah, exactly. So what the, the butternut squash soup is, basically butternut squash, the onion, the garlic, chicken stock, mm -hmm. salt and pepper. That's all you That's need. That's it. All right, so we just dump her all into the blender. A little bit of chicken stock. Just kind of go it. as you see how thick it is as you go. Winnie tasted. Do we need Winnie approved. Uh, um, Brussels sprouts. And what are you gonna do with the Brussels sprouts? Sauté them for a second and toss them in the oven. Okay. Update on these, they're finally really, you can hear that, that crunch. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Bacon, Bacon fat. fat. You could use butter, butter or whatever. Olive oil, anything. Yeah, We're it's just gonna give a little extra delicious. Flavor. I mean, heck, you could actually put bacon bits in here and it would be delicious as well. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so we're going to just t basically toss these Brussels sprouts in the bacon fat mm -hmm. with the onion and the garlic, and then we're going to put it in the oven. And At that's 400. Crisp them up. To crisp them up. Easy. Put them in that bacon fat. Yeah. And I feel like I don't know what I'm doing. Easy there. <laughs> it's his show. He it's thinks. Still in the thumbs, Look at that pan toss, though. It's really my hand, it's so, me. As with anything when you're cooking, season it as you go. A little bit of salt. Ooh, look at them, nice. they're like popping around. They're happy to be there. They're here for the party. Look at onion. And we'll put the garlic. And basically you just want to sweat that flavor out a little bit. Into the fat, the grease. Your toss was way more impressive than me. I did not steal your thunder. I'm by a fan. So I can hope that you guys can still hear because we have insanely sensitive smoke checkers. We were actually, we went to the Arboretum with one of our neighbors and we were talking about that while we were out because if you don't have the vent fan thing on, the smoke checkers go off like within two minutes. We don't want that to happen because Winnie gets really scared. She's probably already hiding because she's scared. So. We're about to cook some chicken. We so, got those Brussels. These are about to pop into the oven. 425. Set it, it and nice forget it. And golden. Don't forget it. Please don't forget it. Don't forget it. it. You'll end up with burnt Brussels. Alright, so what you want to do? Get a cast iron or some other type of pan. It's the heaviest pan you got. And you want to turn it on high. Super high. Put some oil on there. And you want to get it to where it's almost smoky. Smoking hot. Smoking. This one time, Scott and I were at this um, nice winery restaurant in, where were we? Carmel uh, Valley? Carmel <laughs> Valley, right? Yeah? We've been to a winery there, yeah. Yeah, we went to this nice restaurant after we had been day drinking at wineries throughout the day. And I don't know if you guys had watched the one episode of Always Sunny in Philadelphia, and if you know, you know. It's where he gets like the wooden tooth, right? And he like whistles when he talks. Well, we were, I don't remember where, I think we had made it through dessert. So at that point I was feeling good, probably had a, you know, a bottle of wine or something. And um, there was a s'mores dessert. That s'mores dessert was phenomenal, and I don't really like marshmallow, but I love s'mores. And I ordered the dessert, and we're in this quiet room. Like, there was all of maybe 10 tables there, right? And people there were there with their families, whatever. Anyways, 
I <laughs> was laughing and saying, you know, I ordered to our waiter, which our waiter was pretty cool. He was hip with the times. He knew it. And so we started, um, I ordered it, I think, saying like, all of the s'mores dessert, please. Yeah, that drunk. No. And she was so annoying. <laughs> So, so he annoying. responded back saying it in that same voice so he knew and he was saying like oh me and my kids do that and it's so funny and blah 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 blah. Needless to say it was hilarious and you thought it was somewhat funny at first as well. At first. He says I'm annoying. The goal is to like have this skin crisp up as much as possible. You'll notice that the salt the has already pulled a lot of moisture out. Yeah, so, so you pat it. it. Because you do not want salty. water in with oil. You don't want it right. You don't want that. And then put it skin side down. You'll see that skin shrink up. Whoa. Have that chicken nice wow. and cooked in there. That is so worth it. Yum. So the skin's going to shrink up. The chicken will plump up. We'll let that sit there for a few minutes and get nice and golden. We have it on high. Yum. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna flip it and transfer it to the oven. Stuff with shot. Alright, right. checking on the Brussels. So the key is you wanna leave the chicken because you want that skin to be really crispy. And if you don't, if you pick it up and flip it too early, the skin is gonna stick to the pan yeah. and it's not gonna stay on there. So yeah. you really want it to cook for the longest. So just take a peek every so often and just make sure that it's not sticking, obviously, or it's not like burning but it's gonna take a little while to get nice and crispy. See, it's getting there. not quite there yet. All right. Chicken. So, chicken. It looks like it's basically about ready. Golden brown, Look crispy at that, on the edges. Yeah. That one we'll put last. That one's ready. Yeah, that one looks good. That one's about ready. So this okay. will finish in the oven. It'll continue to crisp up. I don't like when I try to assist. What is that called? That's called a sous chef, right? What? A sous chef? Yeah. I'm a sous chef. But he won't even let me. He wants to be the chef and the sous chef. He wants me to be the dishwasher. The bus boy, as you may call it. Yeah. Chicken has been going as hot as you like. You hear that? So now we got some nice crispy Brussels sprouts. Those look yeah. Look at that. Whoa! That's crispy as heck. <laughs> crispy as heck. That looks bomb.com. Now? So now what we're gonna do, all we have to do is plate this stuff up. Let's plate it. <laughs> all right. This is me. <laughs> so we're, we're plating, right? Yeah, so what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna slice this chicken. Helps out a sharp knife. Wash soup. Which is more like a thick soup. Yeah, like a butternut squash soup. Loose uh, puree. Yeah, oh, also, if you're in the Dallas Fort Worth area, Martin House Brewing Company, phenomenal. They make a key lime pie, which is a lime sour ale with graham cracker and lactose. Okay. Soup. All right, you got some pumpkin seeds and you can sprinkle them around the edges like that, like so. A little bit of, a little bit that's of not the edge, that's on all of it. Yeah, okay. well I missed the edge. Okay. But there we go. <laughs> so, so we're gonna cover the middle up with chicken and Brussels sprouts, so. Brussels sprouts. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Cause you know what? Boom. It tastes pretty. Looky that. Chicken on top. Crispy chicken. And then, Always. 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 Some finishing salt. I'm gonna use some smoked salt. Ooh. Has a little bit of extra flavor and dimension Smoky? to the dish. Oh my salt. He's such a dork. Alright. And there you have it. Dinner. Yum. Yum. And somebody who couldn't wait to eat without me. Can we just peep our insanely messy? <laughs> <laughs> living room and I miss and I miss Winnie who's hoping that we drop something you sweet girl <laughs> how is it it's 
pretty damn good. Pretty good. About to dig in. Look at that color. Color, color, color. <laughs> Did you think it was good? <laughs> well, that's all we have for y'all. Thanks for tuning in. Until next time. <laughs> no, but if you guys like this video, um, want to see more of this stranger's face who is not always mountain biking, but most of the time he is, um, let us know. If y'all want to see like collaborative cooking, I don't think that'll ever happen because he's very territorial. Of his or if y'all want to hear more uh, corny jokes next time, let me know. Kelly told me to keep it down and. No, I didn't. I said, <laughs> be yourself, but be normal. <laughs> wow. So no corny jokes. Anyhow, hope y'all liked time. it. This meal was delicious. If you do recreate it, that would be super cool, and you should um, post it on Instagram or whatever y'all crazy folks post things on. That would be really That's all. See you later. Bye. Bye.